All right, this video is for anybody that's looking to get started with Pygame. When I put this project together, um, I feel like I learned a lot of things and I hope that anybody who's watching and following along can learn something from it too. So here we have the, uh, the finished game here and I'll start that to show you what it looks like. Uh, really simple, uh, very, very sad graphics, but uh, you can, as you can see, you can move around left, right, up and down. Uh, you don't clip outside of the boundaries. And if you run into these little zombie characters, um, your health bar up in the corner depletes. And then once you lose all of the health, um, it'll get, take you to a game over screen for a couple seconds and then it'll shut off by itself. And so, um, yeah, it's really simple. Uh, if you want to get started, make sure that you download the, the assets and everything from the link in the description. And uh, let's let's get going. So, first of all, when we're using Pygame, we have to obviously import Pygame into our file. So we import that, and then I'm going to import a couple of other things um, that we can use later on. Um, and then we're going to have to import another thing from Pygame, and that is going to be the locals. So type in pygame.locals, import, and we'll put this little asterisk. That means that we're importing everything from there. And this just kind of gives us access to a bunch of different constants. Now, if you don't know what I mean by constants, that's just something that is a value that doesn't necessarily change while you're using your program. And then last thing that we have to do up here is actually initialize our game. So you type in pygame.init, and this is always gonna be important for running any kind of pygame program. The next thing I wanna do is set up our constants. So over here, uh, we're gonna type a couple of things that aren't gonna change over the course of our game. So the first thing is going to be the size. So you saw the window that I had and it was um, actually 1000 pixels wide and 600 pixels tall. So to um, actually set that window, we're going to create this size variable. And the reason why I'm capitalizing it is because that's kind of a convention for naming constants. And then we're going to give it a width and a height. And then we'll set it to a tuple. So the first value in this tuple is going to be the X value, and the second one is the Y value. So if you imagine this whole screen is kind of a grid, uh, anything that runs from left to right is the X value, and anything that goes up and down is the Y value. And then when you kind of count out the numbers, uh, you want to consider the top left corner as zero. So if we had, for example, zero X and zero Y, that would be up in the corner. And if I said something like 10 and zero, that means 10 to the right on the X value, but it wouldn't go anywhere on the Y value. Um, if I did 10 and 10, that means 10 to the right on the X axis and then 10 down on the Y axis. Uh, but this is going to be for our window. So we'll give that a value of 1,600. All right, and then once we do that, we need to have our display. And this is the actual window that we play on. To get a display, you're going to call pygame, display, and then set mode. And what you're going to pass to this is the size. So you could just pass 1,600 into here, but if we want to kind of change the size of our window later on, this will make things a lot easier. And then we're going to have also FPS. So that's going to be how quickly, how many um, frames per second we're running. And you'll just set this to pygame.time.clock and then call it with the parentheses. Now, uh, these are going to be a couple game specific <clears throat> variables. Um, the first one is going to be base speed. I'm going to set this to seven, but this is basically going to control how quickly our character can move around. Uh, if you want to make it move faster, just increase the number. If you want to make it move slower, you can decrease it. After that, we're going to have our base health. And again, I'm just going to set this to 300, but you can set that to whatever you want in, uh, in the end. And then we're going to have a couple of colors that we're going to use. So you saw that we had like a health bar that was green and red when the health was depleting. And there was also this kind of overlay effect over the whole screen whenever the character was taking damage. So uh, first I'm going to set up the green constant and we're going to pass it a tuple and it's going to have three values. So these values are going to represent the R, G, and B of a color. So if you don't know what that means, uh, this is just red, green, and blue values. So um, they can range anywhere between zero and 255. So zero being the darkest and 255 being the lightest. 
So if we have green, that means we don't want any red. That'll be zero. Green is going to be maxed out. And then blue is just going to be set to zero. So with that in mind, if we're going to be doing red, RGB, we're going to have R be set to 255. And then everything else is just going to be set to zero. And then for the red overlay, that's going to be a little bit different. Um, we still want all of the red to be maxed out there, but then we also want to pass a little bit into the green and a little bit into the blue, and that'll just help make it kind of uh, a little bit of a darker color. Um, so it's not just like a pure bright red. And then we just have a, two more constants to set up here. The first one is going to be BG. I'm going to call that our background. And this is going to be that grass field image that you saw um, as the background. Um, to get that, to get any image actually, uh, you just type in pygame.image.load and then you would pass the path, which is where it is in the project. So this is the file that we're going to use, grassfield.png, and this is inside of the assets folder. Now I could just type in assets uh, grassfield like this. But the problem with this is that if we're running this on like a Mac or, or Linux or something, uh, sometimes the way that they set up their directories, their folders is a little bit different. So to make sure that this runs safely anywhere, we're going to be using the OS module for this. So type in os.path.join. And then inside of here, you just pass as a string, uh, as a, an array of strings, anything that will lead you to the file. So first we're gonna pass in the assets folder, right? And that represents this right here. And then uh, we're gonna give the name of the file. So that'll be grassfield.png. And just make sure that you're typing everything, um, considering the caps and all that. Okay, so we could finish right there, but to make things a little bit um, easier for us and to make it run smoothly and quickly, you can add this at the end here. You just do dot convert and then call that. So this will just make um, it easier for the game to um, display the image. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but uh, that's just what I've read. All right, and then the last thing is going to be the font. And this is going to be our text for anything that we want to type onto the screen. Like when I had the game over uh, game over sign or uh, the, so the number of seconds that the character survived. So we'll do pygame.font sys font and make sure that you got the capital S and the capital F there and then this takes two parameters the first one is a string of the name of the font that you want to use and then the next one is the size of the the font that you want to use all right so we've got all that set up this is the beginning um, and we have all of the constants so the next thing we want to do is set up our game loop so a game loop is um, is going to be a loop here which basically the the game is going to be checking for different things like you know checking how much health does the character have um where are all the characters on the screen um is there any is if the character's health is all the way down uh do we run the game over function and to start this off uh i'm just gonna give it a uh infinite loop so normally like if you were coding something you wouldn't wouldn't want something like this but uh we'll set up some things to break out of this loop um, later on. So first of all, um, we need to, I want to set something up. Actually, we'll set it up to break out of the loop right now. Um, if we, if we close out the game, click the X in the corner, we want everything to, to quit running. We don't want it to be running in the background anymore. So to do that, we need to check the event list in the game and we'll do that with a for loop. So for event in pygame.event.get like that. And what this is going to do is just going to get a list of all of the events that are happening in the game. And then we're going to use a couple of if statements to check if um, the quit event is run. So we'll do event.type and set that to quit. So basically, if we close out of the game or um, use some key uh, shortcut to close it out, what we want to do is to close out the game and then close out the program. So to do that, we just do pygame quit and then we'll follow it up with sys.exit and so that means if we click on the x everything will just close out nice and neat and it's not going to be running in the background anymore all right um 
So that's going to be going. Uh, we're going to set up a couple of other events later on. Um, but first, let's uh, let's look at how we can actually draw the images onto the, the screen. So to do that, we're going to need a function that we'll define up above. But first, let me call it down here. So what that's going to be is we want to draw the window. And inside of here, we're going to pass a number of things. But for now, we're just going to pass our display and the background that I set up earlier in the constants. Okay, so now you can see it's squiggly under here. Um, VS Code's just telling me that this is not defined yet, right? So it doesn't know what to do with that. So I'm gonna start defining that up here under game functions. So um, to draw this, uh, to set up this function, we're just going to define it. So we hit def and then draw window, same name. And then we pass it the same things, okay? Uh, what you name it in here isn't important, but just to kind of keep things tidy and to uh, be able to keep track of where everything is going, I'm going to call this display and this one background. Okay, put a colon here and then we can start defining it. So the first thing that's going to happen, um, if you remember the game that we did, uh, there's a background, which is the grass field, and then there's the, the hero character on top and the zombie characters on top. So basically, whenever you're doing this kind of animation, what the computer is doing is drawing every single frame for you. So it would first lay down the background and then everything else on top of that. So that's why we have to draw the main background first. And how do we draw things? We use the blit function. And to use blit, what you're going to do is you're going to take your display and then add blit at the end of it. And inside of here, you're going to pass two things. The first thing is what you're trying to draw. In our case, it's our background. And then the second thing is going to be another tuple, which tells you where to put it. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do this, but first I'm going to um, just tell it to set it at zero, zero. So what that means is it's going to take our, our image here, this grass field, and uh, this is the starting point, the anchor point for that image. And we want this to fill up the entire frame. So we want to make sure that this gets put into the top corner, the top left corner and fills up the entire frame. So we have that display.blit that's going. Um, if we run this though, right now, we're not actually going to get anything. Um, and that's because the, the frame hasn't actually been updated yet. Okay, so we drew it down up here, but we need to call a function here, and that is called um, display or pygame.display.update. So I'm going to do that right here, pygame.display.update. And that will take care of that for us. So now if we run this again, so I'm going to do python zombie game tutorial. Um, if you Press tab. Okay, I guess it's not working right now. Tutorial. Pi. Oh, that's because I spelled it wrong. Okay. There. So now if we run this, um, it's going to come up and there we go. So we're running the game. It doesn't look like it's doing anything right now, but it's basically just drawing this image over and over and over and over again. But we have a little problem with this right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to add something down here. I'm just going to have it print time dot time. And if we run that again down here in the terminal, if you hit up, you can get the previous command that you ran. I'll hit enter. And you can see down here that it's running the, it's, it's printing out the time uh, really quickly. Okay. And if I close out again, uh, this last number here represents the seconds. And look at this. That's one second. It's running a lot of different images um, at one time. And so we don't want this to get out of control uh, and have our character you know bouncing all around the place so i'm going to get rid of that and this is where that fps thing comes back into play so to do that at the bottom here we're just going to call fps dot tick and then inside of here we're going to pass pretty much our frame rate so that'll be 60. Um, that just means that we have 60 frames a second to work with all right, and if we do the same thing here, let's print out um, time dot time, just like that. Let me move that back over. And if we call this again, let's see if that took care of that. Okay, and there it looks like the yeah the seconds are going 
uh, going by a little bit quicker. So we're not um, running through this loop too quickly. Okay, good. Now that we've got that, um, obviously this would be a very boring game if we only had um, the background there. So we want to start adding some character classes. I think this will be a good place to stop for now. Um, so I'll continue going through what the character classes will be in the next video.